Can I get you guys to move your feet back just a little bit? Thank you. Very much. It's like feeling around in the dark. Might, maybe it's still sensing, I'm not sure. No, there it goes. That's why you don't move grandma's cheese. Yeah, it's cutting. Nice imagining. Too bad they raised it that one inch, that one time, I mean lowered it that inch. I could miss some of that. I think uh, Miami's mower is most likely to be cast in a Michael Bay film. Speaking of Michael Bay, I was shocked that he didn't make that Battleship movie. I thought for sure that was him, and it wasn't. But it got me thinking, you know, he probably doesn't want to be outdone, so I don't know when he's going to make, like, Sorry and Monopoly and all the other games. That'd be pretty cool, right? Have all those little green greenhouses and red hotels just blowing up everywhere. People walking away from the explosions like they're too tough. I would go see that movie. We've got some people coming and going for so for those just joining us 
Uh, this is the dyna dynamic competition. So it's a, tougher, it's a tougher playing area. You've got the flower bed. You've got dynamic obstacles like the RC dog. And you've got the fence. It was in a regular shape. There's a lot of challenges in this dynamic competition. You know, I've had some people come up to me um, when I would tell them stories about this competition, and they would say, oh yeah, you just, uh, I bet you just use GPS, and you can do it. I said, well, you, you can use GPS, but it's not that simple. And I think because so many people have GPS in their cars, and all you really need to know is what highway you're on, not, you know, what meter of the highway you're on. I think some people have some uh, delusions of, um, you know, how accurate it can be. And so we have a, a lot of centers that go into these robots to, um, you know, to assist in that. Yeah, looking good over there, guys. Taking care of that fence. But a lot of the challenges in today's navigation is how can you bring these sensors together to get the best possible navigation solution? And more and more, it's what information can you use from your environment and bring that in and help you? This dynamic competition is a great example because you can't survey where the uh, where the little robo dog is. You have to be able to actively adapt to that situation. It's really amazing. Um, oh, is it gonna make it? Yep. It's really amazing how much we take navigation for granted, really. Humans and um, a lot of mammals in general are just expert, very intuitive at navigation. You know, we, I guess I shouldn't have said mammals, since I don't think, no, birds, they're not. They're, uh, we got a bio guy here. Well, anyway, birds use, um, you know, they can use the magnetic fields of the earth to navigate. Um, dolphins and other sea life can use sonar. You know, we use differential sound in fact, babies before they're even born can hear direction. And we have our inner ear equilibrium to help us balance. It's sort of our gyroscope or our IMU, if you will. And our brains are really, you know, so complex and they're so good at integrating all our different... Oh, here it comes. Ooh, perfect. All right. Stop on a dime. <laughs> Not the smartest dog, I wasn't dog, paying but attention, okay. and I didn't really get we see, designed I don't for think that. I got the dog. I don't know. I, I was watching something over there. I mean, you told me, and then I get distracted. Anyway, we don't even realize that our brains take in so many signals from our environment. They take in vision, stereo vision, so you can get depth perception. We take in sound for for attitude, for direction. We have uh, our inner ear. If you saw Inception, the only thing that would wake him up is that sense of falling. You have that sense in your head. You've got touch sensors all over your body. You can feel your way around. It's really incredible. And it really makes you appreciate it when, you know, you're an engineer working on a problem like this and things that you can take for granted are not trivial. He's coming on really strong here. Thank you. 
I might have missed the dog with the video. I got distracted about something that's going on over there. And For those of you wondering, um, restarts count as a 15% penalty. It's a percentage of the total available points in the cutting portion. So essentially if you take one restart, the maximum number of points you could get cutting is like 85. Um, and then the cutting portion is actually worth 80% of the total competition because these teams um, are also required to write research reports that have to meet certain criteria. And uh, also they gave us presentations over at Tech Edge on Thursday. And that's also 10% of their grade. Actually, you can see their report scores, I believe, are, uh, are up on the, uh, oh no, they've been removed, okay. Well, they were there yesterday. get in quicker <laughs> well, they run out of time they're repeating the same areas over and over and we still got areas that haven't done hey Aaron we good time check okay so Miami used two minutes and 28 seconds on their first run. And I was just told that about 12 minutes, a little over 12 minutes have elapsed. So it sounds like you guys have about five minutes left. Once again, if you're wondering, we have some uh, apparel on sale inside the tent. Our t-shirts, um, polos, and sunglasses. And I mean major rad in-style sunglasses. Trend-setting sunglasses. I'm serious. I mean, the dorkier your sunglasses look anymore, the cooler you are. So I can't think of cooler sunglasses, to be honest. And I believe they are 100% UVA, UVB, UV, every UV ray they found. Yeah, and they keep finding new ones, but uh, these ones will protect you. All right, big hand for Miami. Congratulations, great job. Um, well, you have five minutes to decide if you're gonna restart. If you decide not to, uh, judges, you can start spray painting. Okay, not going to restart. So another one in the books. One more big round of applause for the Miami Red Blade. And it's 2 o'clock. 